All right, everyone, welcome to the latest episode of the Data for Your Gaming podcast. It's your host once again, DA, and of course, we have Kachi here. And today, we're going to be talking about Warframe, some major changes, or let's say upcoming changes in terms of mainline. And uh, there's a lot of good stuff, a lot of bad stuff, <laughs> things that the community is raving about, and we're going to be discussing that today. So, starting with uh, Kachi, you got my uh, note that I sent you, right? Yeah, I got it, man. I got it right here. So, when you saw that developer stream, what was the first thing that came through your mind, man? Well, I I watched, like, after the stream was over because I was doing something else. But I was looking at it. And the one thing that came to my mind, because I was talking about this last stream and my um, take on it, when it comes to shotguns, as far as with status changes, being able to hit 100% status chance. Yeah. I didn't find anything in that, to be honest with you. It made no sense to me because going over 100% status, there has to be something else in there that makes a difference. Like, okay, if you hit 120% status chance, what's the difference between that and 100%? True. For shotguns, it's clearly going off of pellets. Oh, yeah, that is true. You could tell the difference between 99.9 versus 100%. So those and over hundred percent is like you know. So does that okay? Because if if we're going one hundred percent, and let's say the shotgun fires maybe five pellets, that counts for two hundred percent each. So mm -hmm. if we're going over a hundred, like I don't even know how that is going to work. Because with crit, we already know how that you know values in into you know late game or mid game, whatever it is. But status, yeah. it is still confusing. You know. Um, is it gonna be using green num green numbers or purple numbers? I, I don't even know. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I just don't get it. And the best way to test out status chance is that if you have your Tigris, mm -hmm. you go on based off of pellets. If you're going off of the heck, it's kind of tricky because again, you're factoring in crit as well and it differentiates. So sure. you have to balance it out as far as with crit versus status. The comb is kind of tricky as well, too, because it has a spool up time. So it's hard yeah. to detect which of those pellets are going to be proc in status and which one isn't. Yeah. Cause I, so cause the I, best shotgun to test is the Tigris. Because I, I noticed there are there are certain weapons in the game that are classified as shotguns. But the yeah. way they fire, it's some of them are like a beam weapon. Some of them, you can't uh -huh. even tell it's a shotgun if it wasn't for the classification. You know, and you know exactly what is going to happen to the kid guns too. You know, like how? yeah, that too. They have to factor that in as well. So it's kind of weird. Yeah, that that is going to be a big thing. But um, I think it is one of those thing changes that they're trying to make due to some of the enemy and AI changes that they're making. Um, shield gating is one thing that they talked about. We we've talked about. They first talked about shield gating like in twenty. Is it 2016 yeah. or 2015? It was like at least three, three years about to be, probably at least four, but I'm going to say at least three years ago now, people in the community have been talking about shield gating because they've been talking about that. Yeah. And when you're talking about um, frames that has a lot of shield, it's like they will benefit a lot from it. Mm -hmm. Come to mind, which is Frost and um, Hildren. Oh yeah, and uh, you know, I so it's like ooh. I also want to wonder. I also wonder how, like, you know, frames that benefit from like that has the ability to create over shields. I yeah. wonder how that is going to work with like Volt and his augment. Yeah, but then I start looking at you know what about frames who don't have shields at all? You know, Inaro, Nidus, those two. Mm -hmm. What is gonna happen right. to yeah. them? <laughs> it's gonna be weird. As far as with them frames, because in order for them to put the shields on, you're gonna have to put like a mod on them for them to even mm -hmm. have shield. But that's not gonna work either. Oh yeah, and for me, like the most thing that I was excited about with the shield gating thing is the fact that an enemy can't just burn through your health while you have like, let's say you have 500 shields and they they just burn through your health, especially those uh ancients. Oh. If they're targeting your health, I mean, they're going to bypass shields. Because, again, if you have a slash proc on you, it can't just go based off of the shield. 
Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, one of the things that they were awesome. talking about is like it's gonna have like a, I think like a one second immunity phase before the whole thing starts eating out through the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. I mean it, that part is all right, but you know, slash is still slash. It's still gonna do its major damage, yeah, especially uh, end game where <laughs> where enemy hit you with a heavy slash. Like, yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, the, the way the game is right now, I think, you know, when we're looking at IPS, it's going to be slash, then puncture, slash for crit puncture for, you know, status-based builds and stuff like that. Impact is still useless in the game, which is something that I was hoping that they would address when they were talking about, you know, staggering effects and stuff, but... Yeah, they, I mean... What do you think about it? even back then with with puncture and even though impact is still useless, but at least with puncture weapons like in the void puncture was obviously good because when Emmy gets hit with puncture, mm -hmm. they do less damage towards you. Yeah, deep off. You know, bypass that. Just use uh, just use slash. That's true. So so, oh, right there. so what do you think about the scaling though, the new scaling system where instead of the tight, you know, U curve that we've been dealing with for, you know, since 2013, now it's going to be a little bit like a S shape. It's going to kind of like balance out and kind of, you know, level out, you know, where it doesn't just skyrocket again. Do, do you, like for you as someone who does long survival runs and all that kind of stuff, what is your take on that? Because it really is going to affect difficulty in the game. And as far as with enemy scaling, to be honest with you, I was done with that conversation a long time ago as far as with enemy scaling because at the end of the day, players, they don't even go past at least 25, 30 minutes anyway. <laughs> so scaling enemies is kind of pointless now. You have to tailored to like the hardcore guys that go that far ahead for them to have any form of interest but you're talking about the average player doing a long survival run by at least 25 minutes in what the enemies are like at least what in their mid 30s going on 40s your weapons are still too strong you're gonna kill them anyway exactly and people consider that end game i'm like that's not end game bro and with this new you system far yeah you go far in a survival like i gotta be telling people years ago like try and go at least 10 hours in a survival and tell me what level enemies you see <laughs> and see if your weapons go be doing any form of damage Oh man! Because again, you. status is king in this game. I don't care who, how much crit you have on your weapons. Yep. Status is king. Yes, because so. the thing is, crit is only for early to mid game. Once you start hitting that end game, status is all you need to build for. Because exactly, that's cr it. All, all crit is going to do is just tickle those enemies. Even though you're going to see those red numbers, it's really not going to mean anything. Anything you know. exactly. So, so yeah, because because right now, like with this upcoming mainline change to enemy scaling, to me it seems like you're going to hit three hours, and you're maybe that's when you will start seeing level one hundred enemies. Still, like I said, even then, it's like people don't even want to go that far ahead. Yeah, nobody. Best has case time for that. that, even if you have a yeah, even if you have a good squad, they want to go at least. 50 minutes or like at least an hour because around that time they already got what they need. Yeah. And uh, and the rewards and then after don't that, scale they don't, they anyway. Just the yeah. The only thing I like with survival now is that if a person wants to leave, mm -hmm. they'll leave. You're not going to be dragged with them. You'll stay in True. this. True. <laughs> True. They do that. That's the only thing in survival yeah. I like. That but independent that, extraction. Uh, yep. That's the only thing I like with survival now. But as far as with enemies scaling it, it's pointless. Yeah, I, I think you know it might it might help some of the people who are doing ESO, and you know I don't know maybe maybe it might help them out. Um, yeah. one thing though that I you know like speaking of uh you know uh power creep and all those things, um, yeah. the nerfs. Um, they nerfed the arcanes, you know, like some people say they're still going to be powerful. It's kind of like a double edged situation where they did with them. One, you can no longer double stack 
the arcanes now. So you can't have two, um, you know, arcane guardians on your warframe where both of them will proc or two arcane Ooh. trickeries. So, however, instead of because you will not be able to double stack, you will now be able to get to level four instead of just uh -huh. level three. Now, here's the yep. problem. My biggest issue with them is that they've now given every single one of these arcanes a cooldown. That well, is my major issue with it. Because here it goes again. If you have, like, let's say you have an arcane grace on and you got that proc and you're healing yourself, you're taking so much damage, like, shit, grace is supposed to proc yet again, but it has a cooldown. It's like, damn. Exactly. Grace is not gonna be proccing, so people gonna be rocking um uh crap rejuvenation on their frames a little bit more because of course that heals you consistently, yeah. but not at the rate of a arcane um, grace would. Exactly. So it's like, yeah, it's kind of a double edged sword, but it depends on the arcane you're using because I still think guarding is still gonna be good because again, oh, yeah. it's based of armor, based on how much times you get hit, it gives you that armor. But mm -hmm. you still have the mods to make up for its cooldown anyway. So uh, it depends on the arcane, but because for me, for me as someone who like runs tanky frames all the time, chroma, yeah. nidus, you know, in arrows and all that kind of stuff, even sometimes harrow, I put on I double stack my guardians, a full set of guardians, I double stack them. And it's not that, you know, the, the the arcane, the extra armor is going to stack on top of each other. It's just all about those chances. Because, yeah. you know, I just wanted to be able to proc, you know, every second or every split second. And this new changes, some some arcanes have like a 30 second cooldown. Mm -hmm. Which is like, damn, like, you know, like that, you literally just killed them. Like what they did to arcane barrier and... <laughs> You know, Pulse and oh. all those. <laughs> <laughs> and you already know. <laughs> Man, you know, like on Warframe, like on Warframe market, like people are really, people are really going hard trying to sell the, sell this Arcanes. And I'm just telling oh, them. that shit kicks in. You know, with the way the community complains so far, some of these things might see a rollback. So don't rush to sell them now. Oh, it's the same thing that happened with, um, oh God, you remember the mods with, um, uh, Argon Scope, oh my all God. those mods from the Acolytes, and it was like, oh shit, they're nerfing these weapons, uh, the mods, and, and people were trying to sell them because of the whole sliding thing with Maiming Strike and whatnot. Oh my God, when, when they stopped the, uh, when they made it so that you, it will have to be a line of sight and you can't kill enemies behind nope. the walls. I still kept my maiming strike. I told I, people I don't do. sell it. <laughs> <laughs> and then once that wave came in and people sold their maiming strike and they realized, oh shit, I could still slide kill these guys with my maiming strike. Exactly. People were trying to get their shit back. I'm like, see? <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and what was so funny was that I didn't even know that the the wall hack situation was a possibility until that you know patch note came in and people started talking about it and i was like oh that was possible yeah people were actually doing that shit like they'll just be sliding through a wall and then still hit enemies and it's like oh that's oh, actually yeah. a thing people were abusing that so that's why d had to do what they had to do mm -hmm. and, and then you know I, oh my god it, it's just I, I think um this latest stream was like one of the most important now i don't know if it is a pr move or if it is just them being sincere However, I did I did see so just so many changes that could in one way or the other affect the veterans in the game. Like the, the changes will help a lot of new players, granted. But as far as vets is concerned, because yeah. it, it, for example, they're nerfing shotguns on their status. That's the only one that's gonna be on people's mind as far as with the shotguns. You because know what I'm yeah, uh, over a hundred percent on shotguns as far as with status. Like I said, unless there's like a major difference that is clear from 100% from either 120, 40, whatever. Yeah. I literally don't see the sense of yeah. going over. Bro, because my, my Tigris Prime can already shred a level 135, 150. Like, so it's it's one of those things where it's like, so what exactly is it going to do? 
Now they did make some tweaks to it to kind of differentiate between sorry shotguns. And I think one of the ones that really kind of made me mad because I usually run um Vacor Heck because of that uh syndicate proc for the armor buffs and all that stuff. Yeah. I run mm -hmm. it with a sniper and then I run it with my chroma. And one thing that I was really excited about, but also not excited about was that they removed self damage. We've oh. always wanted that, <laughs> but now when, when you talk about self damage removed, I mean, it goes to, let me see self damage as far as with weapons. Like, yes, the town core. Okay. Now the town core is friendly again. You're talking about other weapons that would damage you. Lens, <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. You know, like the the it's good now, the but... the kunai with explosive payloads and all the you know I said explosive payload, but you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, I know what you mean. But it because because okay, like when we do idle on hunts, you have your heroes, you have everybody has their own role. Trinity manning the you know the lures and all that stuff. You have your chroma. You turn on your vex armor and you just ch -ch 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 -ch, self damage. Yeah, self damage really yourself. Quick. Yeah, that can't be what I do with the you know. Like oh, with the Kastanas, cause cause it's kind of like or the high yeah, pretty it's kind of like Chroma got a indirect nerf. That's what with, some people call it. Yeah, I'm like, man, no, cause see, Chroma see, will yeah. still get damaged by the idol on itself, and he'll be good to go. Yeah, <laughs> I understand that, but here's also the thing too, though. Chroma already got a nerf to begin with. Remember when they nerfed them like a year or two ago when they said the calculations were off and they fixed it. They said it was in it was literally initially doing like three, four times the damage. So they said they fixed it. Okay. So we were like, okay, that is a nerf. Now they fixed it. Now People that they've called the nerf. I never saw it as a nerf. But go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, I'll call it a nerf. I'll call it what it is. So they fixed it. So now here's another major issue. Chroma only had one use. If if we want to be real with ourselves, it only had one real use. When it comes to, we've always talked about they should rework this frame is one really doesn't have a use. Personally, I've, I remember when I was, uh, when I used to talk to the developers back in the day, I say, Hey, you guys need to change Chromas one to something like how Ivara and some of this new reworked frames are where you can hold on that one to toggle the elements instead of aligning the elements with you know your energy color and all that kind of stuff and i just felt like for chroma now that you've removed self damage the frame really doesn't have any main use if we really want to think about it like to get that see you can't just do that one shot as we used to anymore you can still in some circumstances good ribbons and you know a good build but it's going to be hard to do it it's going to be hard to do, but he still has use. It's just like, it's just not what it used to be now since self damage has been removed. But I still, I still be seeing Chromas running around out there still tanking because it's like you said, as far as with him and his changes, like I've always said they need to work on his one and his four. Don't touch yeah. his second and third. Yes, one and four. Good point. I so keep those. And as far as with him and Eidolon hunts, I mean, he still boosts the team. Because, mm -hmm. again, at the end of the day, you don't have to damage yourself. You oh, can yeah. let the Eidolon damage you, and that will be more than enough for you to do um, significant damage. It may take at least two or three shots, but around that time, when, you're, uh, when your teammates are contributing, yeah, one part of the Eidolon's already gone. True, 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 true. And, and on top of that, our weapons are so damn strong now anyway, combined with Rivens. You're right. I mean, like, like, come on, really? You're, you're you right. You already you're have right. enough damage to do enough to I, the Eidolon so you can move on to the next phase. I, I think what is going to happen is it's going to cut into that uh, ability to do eight runs per night or something like that. It's going to yeah, cut it down. Doing all them kind of runs. I mean, you know. There was a time when it came out and I did like freaking six to seven idol lines a night. It was like, damn, how do you do all this? I mean, it depends on the team you're running with. But exactly. Now it's like, 
people just speed run this shit like crazy. But anytime when there's a change like this, there's always somebody that's gonna find a way to get to not not only get around it, but be more effective at it. True. True. Somebody's so, gonna come out with some build like you know. Uh I Yeah, know, as far as with Chroma to do major damage. I'm like mm-hmm. I know uh Grind Grindheart Squad, uh he I think he mains Chroma, so it's probably going to, you know, try to do a workaround once that update launches. Now, speaking of Eidolon runs, you know, one of the new uh, events that is coming out or, you know, new game mode and faction, you know, affiliations, you will be able to buy Arcanes. And I remember <laughs> a few weeks ago, we were talking about the market share and how, you know, certain changes, you know, we were talking about Ravens back then and how certain changes, you know, crippled the prices and all that. Arcanes already lost some of their value when they were switched to Eidolons instead of Raids. So what are your thoughts on this one? Oh, considering how Arcanes are going to be, well, they're going to be nerfed and given cooldowns. I mean, it really doesn't matter what Arcane you're going to end up getting. It's not going to be the same value as it once was or whatever's left of it. True. (laughs) So you're going to get them for like mid range to like the lower end. Oh yeah. That's just what it is. It's going to start feeling like those days when primes used to be very valuable till they started giving them out on switch. Yeah. People starting to realize what I've been talking about as far as with all these, um, not just with changes, but as far as with people trying to get stuff in the trade, I'm like, look, man, the epic days of Warframe, I played on those epic days. Y'all will never yeah. know those feelings where you see that arcane barrier. Yo, I could sell that shit for like at least 3K easy. I don't know about Hell, this. Bro, those Guardian, Grace, like those oh, arcanes man. were the OG You you arcanes. are right. I remember, I remember watching one of your videos back then, and I'm like, man, okay, that is one arcane that I will never get. Because barrier, ages, energize, those three. Energize. That was the one that people <laughs> wanted so bad. I'm talking about like, yo, some dude wanted to put like seven k for that arcane that energized, and that was not enough. Hell, bro, bro, <laughs> it was it so was, rare. Especially if you have a set, that means you have the whole ten. Ooh, exactly. Because oh, you already know people like using their abilities. So once you get that yep. one. Oh, that one energy, like, whoop, oh, it's, it may proc at this oh, one, yeah. whoop, and I, oh, I got full energy. Let's get it. And, and you and <laughs> you know what? Even after I finally got the set, because, you know, with the Eidolons, the price is kind of, you know, dialed down a little. One thing I will say is this. Even after the Operator stuff and Second Dream came out and we had the Xenoric classes and all that stuff, yep. I still relied more on my Energize instead of the Operator's. Like the operators were like a last resort. Yeah, should in case something happens, you have this to fall back on. Yep. So that that is that is one thing, and uh, I think um, it's more of a you know new player or you know early player focus in terms of some of the changes that DE is making. At least yeah. that that's kind of like the way I see it. Um, that's how the game has turned towards anyway and like i said at the time i have no problem with it because they have to go this route because imagine if these changes were not in the game and they kept it to how it was back then where it was a strict it was hard the stalker was actually a legit threat to you he could kill you instantly no matter how strong your weapons were new players would not be playing this game (laughs) That, that is that is true and you know what i have a i have a proof of that because I hopped into Space Lords a couple of weeks ago and I was playing with guys who are like level five and level tens and an antagonist, which is pretty much like a stalker, but a real player hopped into Mm. the game level 55. It killed everybody. Those players literally hit me up on YouTube in the comment section of my review video and said, they're not coming back to that game. See, can you imagine if Warframe was like that where it had it was just strictly hard. It did not change. Yeah. These players will not survive this game. That's Especially true. the Goose Drag 3. That's just icing on the cake. <laughs> the dude with the brack will kill you. 
Oh my god. <laughs> it don't matter. He'll kill you at an instance. Bro, you remember that phase during the law of retribution, the escort phase, bro? Oh my oh. god. Man, them, them them days were awesome, man. It it toughened you up as a player because it's like, man, you man. you been dying all over the place. The goose drag been knowing you. The stalker keep taking your ass. Like, all right, cool. And and those now guys, all these enemies coming in, they're just uh, those just guys apart, will like, they will decide to chase you when you're doing a solo run. Door yep. doors <laughs> locked, everything locked. Everything you couldn't even unlock the shit. They flat lock your ass in there. <laughs> Stalker shows up, is uh, you're like, oh shit, here we go. I guess this is it. <laughs> That's how you yeah. feel. And, and his dread will will one shot you. It doesn't matter. Yes. Oh my god. I, that is the dread is still my favorite boat. Uh, aside to the that, rock, the Serenos, but oh, the yeah. dread it. Bro, that just the sound of the dread is crazy. Oh yeah, oh that that was, man. You know that weapon, dread, hate, and despair. Those three were like, and you know back then you couldn't even sell any of these things. I don't know if you can sell it now, but you can't even sell it. No, you can't sell them. Oh okay, man, <laughs> you can't sell them. People were trying to think like, oh, let me see if I can sell this. Nope, can't sell that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that shit, bro. Man, nice try. That, that 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 was now speaking speaking of um cost and all that stuff, they reduced the cost of building the rail jack. Thank God. To be honest, with you, I really don't care. Cause I, <laughs> I really don't, bro. I people keep asking me about rail jack. As far as did you play it? Did you? All I did was build the shit and sit in there collecting dust. I don't care. <laughs> you know, you know, I haven't built mine, right? I haven't built. I just built. I just literally hitchhike with other folks who have built theirs, and that's literally how I did most of my farming in space. Like, I didn't even bother building mine because it just requires so much work, planet to planet. And you know, one of the things that they talked about on the stream is like they realized that more than half of the player base didn't even build it at all. Like, see, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, bro, bro, the way they, <laughs> they didn't show us data, right? <laughs> they didn't show us data. But the oh. way they were, the way they were talking about that stuff, it felt like 95% of the player. <laughs> yeah, man, I remember when people were hyping up Rail Jack. Like, yo, I want this to drop the, the, the update. When is it coming? It's like, sea of no, Thieves and Space. Got this shit. No one wants to build anything. <laughs> bruh, bruh. They said th the cost was too high. And we finally heard you. I'm like, well, you guys could have thought about that. Like, what, what do you think? This is Destiny? Where everybody <laughs> will go out there and donate fractal lines? <laughs> we don't do that here. <laughs> Oh man, they cut they cut that cost like they really cut it down. Um, it's still I, too late. Like, <laughs> yeah, because because the thing is, more than more than half of the player base is gone. You know, yeah, rel I mean, the only, yeah. The only time you see people come back to Warframe is if there's like a major change that's like, oh shit, Warframe is doing things, or like a major update where all kind of things are coming in. Yeah, you see players come back. But aside from that, like, oh, I'll come back when the next update comes, which is like another six months. Yeah, so, yeah. true. Because <laughs> Railjack was that thing that everybody was like, oh, yes, I'm hyped for it. And then it came out and almost your entire player base can't even experience it because they can't build it. And then, you know, once again, the era quest being RNG based is just ridiculous to me. <laughs> <laughs> like how do you design um, a, how do you design a quest and you put it on RNG like really it's like you don't want your player base to play first of all you don't more than half of the player base cannot get that quest because they haven't built that rail jack yeah, they haven't built the rail jack you have to build it in order for the quest of it man and then the ones who struggled hard to build it can't even find it because it's RNG like bruh mm -hmm. Who who over there was making all these decisions, man? It is it is what it is, man. Like I don't question it. It's their game. Do what you want to do with it, but True. don't be surprised if people are not playing it because of hey. X and Y amount of reasons. That that is true. Is. Like, like in That's your true. thoughts, though. In your thoughts, though, like 
overall? Like why with a lot of these changes in the forums on YouTube videos, I've talked about it back in the day. You talked about it. Rio, a lot of people talked about it. People who, you uh -huh. know, you know, who have a heart, you know, for the game, d depending on wherever it falls, you're into the trading system, the farming and all that stuff. Why are they making these changes now? Like three, four years. Why didn't they make it then? I think back then it was not needed. Hmm. It has made strides and has come a long way as it has. And since newer players are coming in, they have to shake things up a bit. They have to. They can't stay in the same spot. They have to make some form of change. That's just how I view it on certain things. And as far as with, like I said, shield gating, we talked about that three, four years ago. Now yep. they start to put it in. Fine, cool. Same thing with enemy scaling. True. We talked about that years ago. Now they're starting to put in enemy scaling, which to me, okay, but people that have been playing the game for a long period of time is pointless because, like I said, people don't even want to go at least 25, 30 minutes in. Exactly. Tops. So the only change that I see that is interesting is the shotguns. Mm -hmm. because they gotta have to really explain the legit difference between 100 status versus 120 or 130 yeah because I, and i think for us that will take like actually playing it and testing it out to even see what it is because you know you have certain syndicate procs that will automatically already give you status boosts exactly so, so it's like how does this factor into that Exactly. That's the only thing that I see with them talking about that has me you know. thinking a little bit more because it's like, okay, status like, chance yeah. going over hundred percent. Like it has to, it? you have to give me something more. Will there be will that. there be like a effect where if a you know if a, if you kill an enemy with more than one hundred percent status chance it spreads? I mean, because because that would be interesting. But like I don't I said, know. Man, it, <laughs> they have to explain on that because if they're just vague on oh you go over 100 100 status on a shotgun to me it's pointless because again you're wasting another mod slot to go over 100 when really you're not true. doing any form of change true 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 now now one one final question for you you know we're talk we talked about all this proposed changes coming in the mainline update you know of course we will see it when we when we see it you know a lot of times they've always told us about these things and it doesn't come to like maybe six months to a year later but they've announced it in your own opinion since they're you know visiting things from years ago what change would you like to see in the game uh be honest with you, I'm gonna have to really sit and think about that. I mean, it is they have they have like addressed most of the changes. It's just that it took them a little bit time to get to it because they like to hold it off and be like, "Oh, we're doing something else" and all that. True, true, true. But I mean. As far as with a change in the game, I mean, they've kind of addressed it for the most part. It just it took them long to get to it, because if you don't push D.E. to get to these changes, they're not going to change. They're it. not going to do it. Yeah, they're literally they're not gonna do to anything. see actions because for me, exactly. I, you I, have think, to pushing. I think the next thing for me, at least um, armor really doesn't matter in the game anymore. I don't know. You know, because um, armor scaling, I mean, armor scaling really doesn't matter because we already have a frame that gets rid of that shit anyway. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so um, that's but, null and but personally, though, one thing that I've been talking about for years now, I even mentioned it in Discord not too long ago. It's um, synergies between elemental frames. Uh, I need elemental frames to be immune to their own element. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm. of course, I need their abilities to be able to have synergies. You know, if you put, let's say you put um, uh, Ember and Frost into a room and Frost, you know, 
you know, turn, you know, cast Avalanche or something like that. And Amber decided to cast her World of Fire. It should turn into, you know, if they mix, they should get like a blast effect instead of just mm. fire. You, you know, I felt like that will breathe yeah. a whole new life to like team play and team work, you know, you know, people oh, yeah, who, who want to proc uh, magnetic, you know, mm. they, they can, you know, they can get that to work, you know, get your get your cold and your electric. You know, I, I think that that is yeah. that personally, you know, and, you know, of course, the elemental affinity like. I hate it when you're frost and you get frozen in place. Like it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They will have to like go through all the frames and get all of that synergy in. Mm -hmm. It will take them. It will take them some time because people have to understand this too. Not all frames have elements in this game. True. True. People don't even understand that. You know, Banshee is like, oh, what element does she rock? None. She doesn't have an element. <laughs> she just she gives doesn't. you a crit boost. Yeah, and that is one frame that a lot of people haven't touched in a minute. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because for the most part, people love Banshee as it is. And just yeah. by touching one of her abilities, I mean, even her first ability, I wouldn't mind them changing that, even though it's crowd control. But True. True. just right. don't touch sonar or resonance no no that's actually the same thing but yeah. you know mm -hmm. don't touch her second or her third yeah every one of those frames just need a real work because those some of those abilities like stunning enemies really doesn't make it, like it is it's useless in in this current uh state of the game yeah because you already know what to do as far as how to deal with the enemies mm -hmm. so it's like mm, you don't really need to but exactly it's there to use, and 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 her four might need a you know a little bit of a tweak too. I mean, Benji's four is no issue. I mean, it's still also when it comes to uh, interception. Yeah, I guess. Just it's still good. You just locked down the room, but it still bothers me that people still don't know how to build for that sound quake. I'm like, oh yeah, range. You don't need damage. Mm -hmm. You just need range and 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 um efficiency because to lock the. You're not gonna kill anything with it, to be honest. No, it's it's not meant to kill. That's the whole point of the of the of the ability. Yep, throwing a whole bunch of range on it. Yeah, and put range on that duration and then efficiency, your efficiency builds. Just have efficiency and and um and range. Yep. That's simply what it's going off of, and and you just lock down the place. That's true. That's true. That's, that's practically it. Especially if you have arcane energize. Hey, if an enemy dies around you based off of somebody else, you get that proc. There you go. Exactly. Your energy is filled exactly. up, and you still stay in there. Exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really, I really can't wait to see this changes and how it's implemented. Uh, most especially, like you were saying, the status one. I think that is the one that I'm really, really curious about. To see how are they going to, you know, really like what is what is one hundred and fifty percent or two hundred percent status going to look like, you know, and does that also mean that every weapon with a status chance will stop getting, you know, ten percent status? Are they going to boost it all up to twenty now, you know? Yeah, so that they'll have the possibility of going over at least a hundred. I mean, yeah, so, yeah, but yeah. Um, that, that is, uh, I think, I think that is something that we're going to have to talk about later. Once, once we, once we see it happen, we'll probably be on YouTube like, yep, yeah, uh, yeah, we, you know, it's, uh, maybe it's not what we expected, but I guess, <laughs> <laughs> I yep. guess we'll give it a pass, you know, for the new players out there who will enjoy it, but, oh. um, but yeah, anyways, uh really appreciate you um you know sitting down to have this chat today. Uh go yep, ahead yep. and just you know tell people about your channel real quickly. Oh yeah, man. I mean, hey, some of y'all already know I completed the giveaways 60k as far as with platinum, 10k each to the players. So for anyone wondering as far as where my platinum number is at now, it's at 140 140,000 and 167 Damn. my high in case someone wondered what's my highest it was actually two hundred thousand one sixty seven. wow 
That's a lot. That so yeah, I gave away sixty k. So I'm I'm good now. <laughs> that is a whole lot. All right, you guys here. That is King Kachi, and I will have a link to his channel in the description and also in the comment section. Once again, mm. huge thanks to you. Huge shout out to every single person watching out there. Uh, yeah. it's, it's DS signing out. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Peace.